If you're an avid bike rider, then you probably already know the most important part of biking. But if you're not, let me clue you in. It's talking about your bike. Today, I want to show you how to make one more thing that you can put on your bike and talk about. The head badge. Aptly named because it's found on the head tube of your bike. Now, head badges are typically already existing on your bike, and they're just some form of the company's logo that serve as another cool way to brand the bike. But if you did want to add a little extra spice to your bike, be that special snowflake you were born to be, then I'm going to show you how you can create your own. So first thing, you're going to want to think of what you want your head badge to look like. You can go off pictures from the internet or just start from scratch. For me, I kind of started brainstorming and I don't know why, but it ended up on armadillos. I thought, you know what's even cooler than armadillos? Armadillos drinking beer. So I started to look for some reference pictures on the internet because you never know what you'll find. Just googled armadillos drinking beer. And wouldn't you freaking know, there is a whole subgenre of taxidermy that is literally armadillos drinking not just any beer, but specifically Lone Star Beer. Alright, cool. With those surprisingly good reference pictures to go from, this was my final design. We now know more about this weird and magnificent world we live in. We have our design. The next step, we need our materials. Luckily, my mom makes jewelry and actually inspired and advised this entire project, so shout out Lisa! And she had some scrap copper lying around, which is perfect. You could also use brass or a myriad of other metals, but you would have to alter potentially some parts of this process. So second thought, just use copper, keep it simple. I went with 18 gauge because it's the perfect thickness. So with the copper in hand, I grabbed some stencils to trace out the shape that I wanted. Once I had the shape, I used a jeweler saw to cut the metal. And it is nice to work on a bench pin for this part if you have one. Also, try to remember to keep this on nice and vertical. I think it is inevitable that you will break a few blades, but it is what it is. I think I only broke like four this time, which is actually down quite a bit from my previous records. Anyway, after cutting, it's time to get it nice and smooth. So first you're going to want to file the edges, and that'll really hone in on that shape that you were initially going for. And then after that, you can go over it with a really high grit sandpaper, get it super smooth. Now, if any of you are kind of like, fuck this, I hate sanding. Well, you can actually just buy copper blanks online in various sizes, and then you don't have to deal with any of this. But for me, I really like using scrap for my projects. Now you need to clean the crap out of your pieces. I've seen people do this in many different ways. I used Comet just because it was what I had under the sink in my house, but I've seen people use rubbing alcohol and other cleaning solutions. Really, you just don't want any grease on it. And so with that in mind, also try not to touch it once you've done it, once you've cleaned it all. After that, I drew on the designs with a Sharpie marker, and then you need to make sure you let the Sharpie dry well, because we are about to get to the good stuff, which is etching it. The etching will remove layers of materials in places not covered by the marker, leaving your final design. With that in mind, I also applied Sharpie to the edges of the piece and the back, and then I also put masking tape over the back, so that's just to prevent the etch from eating away at your edges and your back. The etching solution I'm using is ferric chloride, which Wikipedia says is harmful, corrosive, and acidic, so play nice and obviously don't drink the stuff. You should wear gloves probably when handling it, and you can also keep some baking soda nearby because that neutralizes ferric chloride. Um, I used an old glass container to do the etching, and then I put it on a hot plate because warming it can speed up the process. However, don't make it too warm like I did because that will ruin your entire project and send you to the depths of despair. So these are my first pieces and as you can see, they did not come out well. I think because it was so hot, the edge worked too quickly and just ate through the Sharpie really fast. So after literally redoing the entire process and doing a lot of testings, I didn't mess it up again and I wouldn't have to live through that tragedy twice. I found that although Sharpies do work really well at preventing etch, there's this thing called a Stadler permanent marker. They're a little more expensive, but they really work the best. And then also just keep your heat a little bit lower and really from what I read, it's probably not even necessary to use a hot plate. You just have to let your pieces sit in the fair chloride for a little bit longer. But regardless, I would check your pieces every like 15 minutes or so and just to see how the etch is progressing. And once you're happy with the etch, you can drop it into the baking soda water solution to neutralize the ferric chloride and then just take it over to the sink and give it a good scrub with an old toothbrush. I imagine a new toothbrush would work just fine also. All right, now we just gotta get that design to pop. There are a lot of different ways you could do this. I use two different methods. First, I use a chemical oxidizer. This just turns the copper black. And once you've done this, you can gently sand the top layer so that the raised parts are that nice shiny copper and then the recesses are black. And the second method I used is a painted patina. 
do this, I simply dab some of the paint on and then I let it dry and I dab some more on and let it dry and blah, blah, blah until I was happy with it. And then again, I just sanded the top layer so it had that nice copper finish. Now the last thing we need to do is form the metal so that it fits your bike's head tube. I used a wood swage block and a damping punch, which made it super easy to get the desired radius from my bike's head tube, but I'm sure there's other ways you can do this, possibly even just by like brute force pushing it against your tube, depending on the gauge used and everything, and maybe use hose clamps, I don't really know, just get creative. Also though, if you're not feeling creative, I did put these two head badges up on my Etsy for sale, but regardless, thanks a lot for watching, I really do appreciate it.